Welcome to Go Mustang Sports. I am Dave McHugh, joined by women's volleyball coach Dave Trumbo as we are exactly halfway through the 2014 season. 34 total games. You got 17 down. You're 16 and 1. I know you didn't have that written up at the start of the season. <laughs> now, to tell you the truth, I do three different scenarios yeah. and even the best possible <laughs> <laughs> record was not 16 and 1. one it was more like 13 and 3 so i'm really tickled and and really pleased with how well we're playing full match of games uh, last week played five wednesday you played messiah four games then at york and in total in those five matches you only dropped two sets uh, you got to be thrilled with that especially how your team performed against messiah in conference action well that was you know a lot of pressure and you know, and on the day of the match, um, Kristen Brooks, you know, was sick yeah. and was not able to play. And so then we had to take our right side, Lauren Weaver, a freshman, move her over on the outside to, to go along with another freshman, Annika Swartz. So we have two freshmen outsides and Jackie Zeppa, a sophomore, um, who saw some meaningful time against St. Mary's because Annika was injured. Sure. Uh, so Jackie Zeppa really stepped up and played well and uh, in that Messiah match. Messiah always gives us their best shot. You look at the scores, oh, sure. it, it, does, it just felt like so much closer than that because they beat us a set, you know? Right. And they played really well, and there were times where we just couldn't stop them, and other times we played really well. And um, so we set ourselves up now that we should be hosting the conference championship. Sure. We set ourselves up also that we're probably going to get the fourth seed, the fourth, fifth play-in game, because right. now we would have to lose two conference matches because we've beaten Messiah, we've beaten Lebanon Valley, right. so we should get the number one seed, although we have Widener you know, Black yeah. Yeah, left on the schedule, right. but uh, hopefully good position. we're in great position to host again for the third straight year. What's in, what You mentioned the Brooks being ill and, and having to shake up your lineup. You've had a lot of underclassmen step up to the plate in different roles or at least early on where you probably weren't expecting. You knew this was a young team, but you've had a lot of underclassmen almost stepping up like they're, they're vets. Yeah, well, when the wrong person <laughs> when the wrong person gets injured, then yeah. we, go, we go back down to that seven, you know, we had seven freshmen coming in this year, right. and we go back and dip down into that class, and they are stepping up. Uh, Megan Wren, uh, defensive specialist, plays a lot of back row for one of our outsides. If somebody's you know a little bit hurt that day, sometimes they won't play back row. And Kristen Brooks, uh, she was hurt. Lauren Weaver, she played all the way around. She hasn't played all the way around all year, but I knew she could based sure. on her club and her uh, high school. I've seen her play all the way around. Has not done it that much in practice. And I said, ah, we'll try it. Let's see how it, it works. And, lose. and she was phenomenal. She had Lauren had 15 digs that game, yeah. and. I never even blinked, you know, thinking, should I take her out in the back row? She just had a perfect performance. And that's got to be feel good. We don't want to pronosticate the future, obviously, the 2015-16 type seasons. But to have the underclassmen already stepping up and feeling comfortable with this team has got to make you feel good for not only the rest of this season, but the future of this program. Well, it, it, it does, except for right now, still the glue is Sammy Perillo. Sure. Uh, and how we're going to play without her taking so many serve receives and how many digs. She just, it's amazing what happens if you pass the ball perfect or if the other team just really hits one hard and Sammy just digs it up purposely. Purple, perfect. Perfectly. Perfectly, yeah. And then, and then we're able to transition into offense. Sure. You know, and what that and that just really hurts the other team when they think the ball is going down and all of a sudden we pass it perfect. And uh, we, it's a new stat. It's called dig. It, we're, we're using it. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> Digs to kills. I yeah. mean, when, when you can actually dig a ball and then we ended up killing it. Because there's a, so much of a difference between a dig that's behind the 10-foot line mm -hmm. and then a dig right to the center. Right. You know, because if it's behind the 10, then we're very... Um, they know exactly what we're going to do with the ball, but if it's at, at perfectly to the center, we can go to all three options. Don't want to let the weekend get away. You played four games at York, only dropped a set to York uh, in the last match that you had. Tough to have that many games, but that, that depth, again, the, the underclassmen being to, able to step up certainly is beneficial when you need to give some, some players rest. Well, and, and we, you know, that weekend was a weekend we knew that we were going to get a chance to play everybody. Yeah. And it is very important how well they play, what the pecking order is going to be for people coming off the bench. Sure. So everybody got to play a lot. Uh, Corinne Schimler, our, our um, second setter, she got to play a lot this weekend, which is great. Everybody needs that game experience. It's not quite the same as no, practice. Absolutely. Heart's fitting a little bit faster. The yeah. fans are cheering. 
It's a little bit it's a different. different opponent. <laughs> yeah, it's a different opponent. It's not. It's, it's not, not your teammate. friends over yeah, there, right. you know. Which because our practices are phenomenal. They're really, really competitive, but it's still not the same. And it's truly a hundred percent. Even if practice is at full go full yes. gear, it's still a real hundred percent. Yes. And and you're now halfway. And so getting that experience for all your players to have is certainly beneficial as you make the turn. You've been dealt with a few injuries here and there, at least people being sick. Now we turn the corner, you have a week off, and you play uh, a MAC crossover match coming up here at Stevenson. While you won't play anybody in conference, technically, in the Commonwealth, you'll see Lebanon Valley, they'll be here as well. You'll play the freedom in the sense of Eastern right. and Wilkes. How important is it to keep the tempo up and, and send a message this weekend? Well, Eastern has been our nemesis. They've beaten us the last two years in the NCAA. Yeah. Um, and so what we're looking at now is regional rankings. Right. Eastern, uh, as uh, we are starting to win, I actually serve on that committee. So as we aren't you lucky? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's really an honor to be yeah. to be able to serve and, and find out how everything works. Oh yeah. Uh, and so, even though Eastern is not in our conference, it's it's a huge regional yeah. confrontation. And if we can get by Eastern. You know that really helps our regional ranking. In case we don't win our conference tournament, sure. that's what they'll go to for at-large bids. Right. You know who across the country yep. is ranked is the next team to come up and for those at-large bids. Yeah, you certainly don't want to have a bunch of teams ahead of you. No. Uh, when it goes to at-large bids, the sooner you can get to the table, as they say, mm -hmm. the better. But of course, you want to win the conference tournament. How important, while this, these aren't conference games, because you'll see a, a couple more to go. How important is this weekend just to keep the momentum? Uh, even with even with a loss, I should say, even if that were to happen, they really want Eastern. Yeah, I bet they do. They they this is they really want Eastern, and you know, and we actually play them again later in, at, when we go to Juniata for a tournament. <laughs> so and we'll hello and Eastern. I, yeah, right. And in Eastern's conference in the Freedom, it's they're going to win. Yeah, I mean they can play themselves and they're going to win. Um, they take it every year. I don't know eight, nine, ten straight years, and so they're not too worried about. At large, just because they know they're going to win their conference. Ours is a little bit more competitive. Eastern, to be I believe, honest, I believe Eastern's a 10 a.m. game on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll follow with Wilkes at four o'clock. You've never been down this road. How do you keep the team focused on the, on on ready when normally it's closer time frame? I mean, there, there's going to be at least four hour difference. Yeah. Well, and that's what the host school they the host school plays exactly. first and last, and right. the other teams can play twice in a row and leave. Uh, and so um, the mothers um, will have lunch. Yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> and, they provide a great right, spread. By right, the way. and uh, I don't think the Orioles are playing Saturday, so we won't be. <laughs> no, they won't. They, you won't be distracted. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure. I, you know, maybe they'll go back to the door. They're going to have to be there at a certain time. We personally want to watch Lebanon Valley play twice. Sure. Because uh, they could be who we draw in the conference uh, tournament. So it's a good chance for us to watch them a couple of times. And win or lose, you want to keep the, the mentality focused after the Eastern game. Because, uh, as you said, they won Eastern, but you don't want to lose focus against Wilkes. Oh, no. And Wilkes came in second place last year yeah. in the regular season. And uh, so we'll be ready for them at 4 o'clock. Any final thoughts looking at the second half of this season as you start, as you say, positioning yourself for hopefully hosting the conference tournament and maybe the NCAAs? Well, I think that our toughest part of our schedule is yet to come. Um, the following weekend, we have Stevens Tech, who is out of the region, but a very strong team, and Gettysburg. Well, then we'll go to Juni we'll have a we'll go to Juniata, play Juniata, Eastern. Juniata's in the top 10. Eastern's around 14th right now. Polls are coming out today. And Carnegie Mellon, who just beat the fifth ranked team in the country. Yeah. All on the same weekend. And then we play Muhlenberg, who's 16-2 and two right now, the following weekend, along with Lynchburg. So we've got some really difficult conference matches, but really the schedule couldn't be any better. We've got confidence, we're playing great, and we're ready. And you're certainly not where you expected you'd be. You're actually right. doing far better. <laughs> Team is 16-1 and one at the halfway point. 17 games left to go in the season. Those uh, first two of those 17 will start at, Must at Owings Mills Gymnasium, you should say, here on Stevenson's campus. 10 a.m. against Eastern and then 4 o'clock against Wilkes. You can also catch Lebanon Valley against those two opponents opponents in between. For Coach Dave Trumbo, I'm Dave McHugh. We'll catch up with the team after the weekend here on Go Mustang Sports.